right, so let's take a look at uh, what I think is probably the biggest uh, wonderfulness of ArtRage 5, which is our new, this, this icon right down here, you see it called Custom Brush. This is what we're gonna be playing with a bit here. Now, if you've done if you've done digital painting in Photoshop, then you know that you can create all sorts of custom brushes. They're a lot of fun to make, and uh, it was something that I th I feel Art Rage had been sorely missing. They had this over here, which is the sticker spray, which sort of at times worked like a custom brush, but I think the the custom brush tool here is more powerful. So let's go ahead open it up. We're gonna open up the presets and the settings as I've already created a couple of custom brushes myself. So I wanted to kind of show you everything that comes along with this. Of course, in the presets, it's just like any of the other presets. You're able to add presets. You're able to add groups. So, for example, we could add a group, and we'll call this, uh, I don't know, let's call this something. Oh, I forgot. See? And sometimes you forget things. There's my keyboard. Okay. Oops. There we go. Uh, let's call this um, uh, T. Uh, how about we capitalize things, huh? T. D P set the digital painter set and click OK. So it creates a new group, and this is where we're able to essentially put any new presets in that we want to, uh, which is nice because then you could you could also separate out like you could have watercolor presets, you could have your uh, gouache presets, so you can have different types of presets going on here. You also have the ability to do a new preset. We're not going to do that yet, but there, the little menu up here allows you to do the same things, uh, opens up your tools preset folder, new presets. You can import a preset collection and restore default content. And so we're all set up there and I'm just going to leave this open up here. It's underneath my face. See, woo, hidden under the face. Okay, sorry. We'll put that right there. And the one we really want to look at is this one right here. And this is how we go ahead and create our own brushes. Now, understand, Art Rage is still the same old Art Rage. You still have your oil paint, you still have your watercolor, your pencil. The pencil tool has been very much improved. Uh, you have all these other tools. So if, if you don't want to create your own brushes, you don't have to. Okay, it, it, nobody, nobody's saying you have to make your own brushes. Uh, what it does is it allows us, those of us that like to kind of fine tune our brushes to fine tune our brushes. So here we have, uh, here you can, you can see presets, right? Uh, this has some general settings like your opacity, your loading, uh, your canvas grain amount, minimum, maximum size, and smoothing. But it's this button right here, brush designer, that is the big one. So let's click it. Whoa, brush designer, yay! And this is where you can design brushes. And that's what is awesome. All right, last video, I kind of touched on this. Today, we're gonna get down nitty gritty with the brush designer, and we're gonna kind of play with it, okay? So the first thing you'll notice up here is you have three buttons. You have your head settings, you have your stroke settings, and you have your color settings. And we're gonna start with just the head settings. And on the head settings, you have your head and your grain. Think of the head as the shape of your the end of your brush, okay? So for example, if we, we'll select from the collection, right? And if we select our white circle, that is the shape of the end of our brush. So if I go in here, and you can see it's circular. Okay, I'm gonna take down like everything else here right now, uh, dab jitter. We'll leave opacity up, but we're gonna space it out right now, right? So one, two, three, okay? You can see, and over here we're gonna uh, turn off color pickup for the time being. There we go. I don't know why it's grainy though. It shouldn't be grainy, because uh, I don't have a grain. We're gonna reset. should literally just be solid. Well, oh, canvas grain amount, ha ha, boom, there we go. All right, we'll get to that here in a second. All right, so here you can see, this is the tip of our brush. So right now I have my dab spacing set fairly far apart, uh, so it just looks like dots. But if you bring that dab spacing down, let's say 2%, now it all comes together. Whee! It's like a big snake. Okay. 
So that's our head, and with your head, you can adjust the dab spacing, the dab opacity, and the dab jitter. Your dab opacity is just that, it's the opacity. So now, you can see it's kind of, but if I go in the same spot over and over, you can build up opacity, okay? So there's me building up opacity. I'm gonna bring my dab spacing out just a little bit, 6%, there we go. So you got, you know, this, a great little, you can almost like marker, right? And this is just with the circle. This is, this, this is just what they give us. It's cool. It, it's cool. Okay, I'm going to clear that. All right, and then dab jitter. You can, you're not going to be able to see it on the circle head, so we're going to select something else. We're going to select the round, let's select the old head. And I'm going to take my dab spacing and take it way far apart again. So now you see as I come... Oh, I've got dab jitter at zero, so it's the same way the entire way. So now if I go up to 100%, notice each time it's it's being put down in different spots. It's not regular. It's jittery, okay? So again, the difference is this is going just straight down in a line with no jitter, and this is with 100% jitter, so really it could end up anywhere. See, that one ended up way down there, then that one overlapped, that one's there. Okay, so that's what the dab jitter, it's a, it's the jittering of the head itself. So we're going to take that back down. I'm not a big fan of dab jitter. Oh, let's bring our dab spacing down because I look ridiculous. There we go. Okay. And I like my opacity down a little bit. All right, so now you've got below that, this again deals with the head, and it's, you can follow the stroke or you can random, uh, and or you can and or <laughs> you can ro uh, jitter the rotation, uh, and you can also randomly start at an angle. So let's let's start with the follow stroke. For example, I'm going to take I'm going to bring my dab. Up. There we go. Okay. So if I bring this up, and I go now to the right, notice that the dab is still in the same direction. Okay. But if I take my follow stroke up and I start going down, and then I go to the right, it rotated. See how that rotated? I'm going to do it again, kind of slow motion. I'm going to bring my opacity up so you can see it a little better, and take my uh, spacing. So this is, this is following the stroke. So I'm going to go to the right, and then go down. Notice that the head is still in the same direction. Okay, now I'm going to take follow struck all the way up to 100%. I'm going to go to the right, and then down. Notice that it rotated. That's because the, de the head of the brush is following the direction that I go. Okay, and then you can also uh, jitter the rotation as it goes. So if we bring this, we'll take it to 100%. So I'm still on follow stroke, but I'm on rotational jitter. And you'll see there's there's differences each time each dab is is slightly rotated. So we get all sorts of different directions, okay? So again, follow stroke takes the head and positions the head so that it f stays in the same direction as the stroke. So it's like whoomp, whoomp, okay? What rotation a uh, jitter does is it then It'll it, it, even if you're following stroke, it'll follow stroke, but then it'll shake it up all like brah, okay. And then to have a random start angle, this is cool because this is more like real painting, right? So if you click on that every time you lay down, I'm gonna lay down, and then again, and again. Oh, let me take my jitter down, clear that. So my first one, I picked my pen up. Second one, pick my pen up. Third one, pick my pen up. Fourth one, pick my pen up. Notice that the start angle for all of them is slightly different. They're not the same. And that's what the random start angle. So it's like a paintbrush, right? When you're painting, you're not putting your brush down in the exact same spot in the exact same way every time. There's slight variations to it. So the random start angle gives us a little bit of that randomness back to uh, art. Cool, right? Cool. All right, so that's the head, right? Over here we have a grain. So I'm gonna take, and from the head, I'm gonna go back and do the white circle. And for the grain, I'm gonna set like the trip, driplets, okay? So now, I'm gonna take all these down to zero to begin with. 
The head is a circle, but inside the circle is that grain. See that? It's not a solid. So if I go and reset this, you'll see we're back to solid. But if I go and put a grain inside it, which right now I'm doing the driplets, you'll see there they are. Okay. Now we can adjust the grain size. We'll take it up to 100%. And we won't see anything because that grain is so far apart. So instead, we'll pick a different grain, such as the round head test. And still, our grain size is too big, so I'm going to take us down a little bit. There we go. So now we see the grain. That's at 41%. This is at, oh, there you go. You can see the grain in there, right? It's, in, it's very small. We take the grain up to like 24%, and it starts to fill it. OK? So that's the size of the grain within the head. The next one is uh, grain progression. And you can see where the grain within the head is is changing, right? So what I'm going to do is I'm going to uh, I'm going to take my spacing and put it like at 55. Now look at that. That's kind of cool. This is all one paintbrush, one time. Okay, that's at 100 percent. If we take that down to 50-ish percent. You can see the grain is moving. It's not staying. So again, back at 100%, right? Essentially painting on a texture there. And then, of course, if you take it down to zero, it resets every time. OK, so grain progression is like a movement or non-movement of the grain. OK, you can also scale your grain with the size of the head. So right now, if you look, I'm going to clear again. If you look, when I, if I do it light, oops, let's go light, and then I press to get bigger, the grain is not resizing with the size of the head. It's staying one size. But if I scale it with the head, it stays the same size of the head. Now, when you do that, you're going to want to increase your grain size you can see there. Now remember, I'm doing this all with my dab spacing far apart. Your paintbrushes aren't going to necessarily look like this. I just want you to see exactly what it's doing. So again, the scale with head means the grain is scaling with the head. Okay, And then you can also rotate with the head. So as the head rotates, the grain rotates with it. So for example, if you're, uh, let's do this. So. Now, one would say that the grain should have rotated with the head, but I didn't. I did not see that. Did you? Let's try again. And to the right, and to the up. Oh, because my head's probably not. Huh. Hmm. Why aren't you rotating with the head? Oh, because it's a circle head, isn't it? Oh, maybe. Maybe. Let's try old grain. Oh, it is. It is. You can see right here and right here, they're in slightly different locations. OK. What if we do like 50%? I want to go back to my circle head, though. I like the circle head for testing theories. But see, it's not. It's not rotating with head. Come grain, rotate with the head. I'll have to look at that and figure out why it's it, it doesn't it doesn't want to rotate with the head. But it could again, it could be because the head's not rotating. But it should. Oh, what if we did this? No, that's dab jitter. That's not what we want. <laughs> Sometimes you mess up. See, this is a great thing with betas. I learn things, and that might actually be uh, a bug. I may have to put that in and find out why rotating with head isn't rotating. I want to say there was a bug in earlier that the rotating with head was broken, uh, but I thought they had fixed it, so I'll check on that. But what's supposed to happen is the grain is supposed to rotate with the head. That makes sense, right? 
All right, so this gives you the beginning. This is the first video. I'm gonna do multiple videos. Uh, the next video is gonna deal with this area, which is your stroke settings, and then we'll finish up with the uh, uh, color settings. But this gives you an idea on being able to create your own brush head and your own brush grain. I'm also gonna make a video that deals with how to create your own head and grain, but we're not there yet, okay? So if you want to, uh, I'm gonna, let's, let's take my dab spacing down so we can create kind of like a, there's an actual brush. <laughs> let's, you know, let's keep the grain as is. But let's take our, I hate the opacity right now. There we go. Oh, look at that. Um, now ignore what I'm doing here. I'm just adjusting things because I can. There we go. And then I can take that down. Oh, okay. All right. So you can see, and this is me changing the grain size. So this is the grain size at zero. This is the grain size at 100%. Uh, we could go with grain progression. Well, that's, that's really kind of cool. Uh, let's, let's not scale with it. What happens then? Uh, I don't like it. Let's go back to scaling. I like the scale with it. I'm a big fan of head scaling. We could do... Oh, there we go. All right. So this is the beginning of the brush designer. Uh, we will continue with our next video here soon. I'm going to be making a bunch of these and kind of sending them out over the next couple of weeks. So uh, if there's anything that you want me to take a look at specifically with the new beta, or if you have any questions, let me know and I'll answer them as I do these videos. I'm really excited about the ArtRage 5. Uh, I think that it's going to make it where I want to use it a little more often because I kind of moved away from it because I didn't have, I, I like to be able to change my own things. I like to be able to do my own things. And I think one of the things that they've done is really uh, started to make this uh, where I can have fun with it without losing the ability for it to be usable right out of the box which I think is important for this you know you use Photoshop as a paint tool I love Photoshop I use it but it's not necessarily the easiest to use right out of the box where art rage is uh, and of course the price differential is kind of huge all right my name is Terry Danish Kimiak the second I am your digital painter and uh, I'll see you next time take care